Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know Madea. Man, please, man. I, I, do I know Madea? You better believe I know Madea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> check it, man. Hey, man, we got a special guest in here today. You really don't need no introduction, man. You see his videos. You see him moving around, man. This guy right here is a creative mind, man. Hey, man. Is it filmed by Miyagi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Filmed by Miyagi. Man, mm -hmm. so, man, how did you come up with that name, man? Um, Was Miyake, it because of the kicking thing? No, you know what I'm saying? Miyaki actually is an acronym for music is a culture itself. You know what I mean? Oh, it's I like actually that. an acronym. It means music is a culture itself. It's actually something I came up with when I was in prison reading um, a book by Jay-Z called Decoded. And he was explaining in the book just how music is so influential and how hip-hop makes stuff cool or not cool. Like if hip-hop say, we wearing Air Force Ones, we wearing Air Force Ones, if we drinking Crystal, we, music is his own culture, so I came up with the acronym Music as a Culture itself because DZ, that's why if somebody look at my Instagram and say DZ Miyaki, DZ was just my street nickname, and I was rapping and stuff like that, but DZ don't mean nothing, so I just wanted my name to mean something, you know what I mean, man, so I really that, came up with Miyaki. Yo. That's dope, man, you know what I'm saying, I, I like that, man, uh, the fact that you, you, you studied and put some time into it, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, um, I know you're going to get into his backstory a little bit, um, just how did, who is he, right? Who is mm. this guy? Like but before, who, before before we start, before the Miyagi thing and right. all that good stuff. Uh, uh, before we start, what he finna shut my show down? Did you see that? <laughs> before we start, now we already started mm -hmm. because I wanted to say before we start, you know, so I'm, I'm appreciate y'all for having me on here for real, for real. I don't really do a lot of interviews, and even though I was rapping way, way, way before I picked up a camera, and I'm known right now for shooting music videos, I'm really camera shy. It's funny that I can make a living off this, but I don't really be on camera a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I definitely respect y'all platform, what y'all doing. Shout out to LD for even, man, you know, man. doing the alley oop and getting me on here. But I really pay attention to y'all stuff. I see the growth, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah, God is good. From day one to right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. most yeah. most vid videographers are very camera shy. Yeah, I, they I'm really, like to be behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah. We'll, I'll get into why I'm camera shy later on. But yeah. Yeah, I just want to say yeah. appreciate y'all having me uh, on I can tell you right now, you join the elite crew, man. Uh, sure, uh, man. Uh, what it feel, uh, uh, Prophecy Films. He been on here. He mm -hmm. never did but one interview, and that was here. Right. Um, a lot of these uh, other Cam guys, God. Cam God, Sean, Ovid mm -hmm. Media. Like it's an elite crew of y'all that mm -hmm. do stuff for different people, man, and 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 have made these these visuals come to life. You know, mm -hmm. certain things that you've done. I enjoyed the hell out of them. We'll get into it a little later, but go ahead. So um, let us know where you're from. Mm. I'm from Detroit. From Detroit, yep. Michigan. Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Ooh, what part? Just like in the heart of Detroit, from the east side. Yeah. East side? From the east, is yeah. that a terrible side? East side is always the. I mean, it is. You know what I'm saying. But Detroit is Detroit. You know what I'm saying. So the whole city is. It is what it is. But at the same time, if you want to be technical, the east would be considered the rougher part. You know what I'm mm. saying. But yeah, I'm from the east. How old were you when you left? Uh, I was 14. 14. Yep. So how was it growing up? All the way up to 14 in Detroit. I mean, you just grow. It's real fast, you know what I'm saying? Just like a lot of other cities, you know what I'm saying? Like Chicago's, the Baltimore's, the New Orleans. Just a lot of inner city places. You got to kind of adapt fast, you know what I'm saying, to grow up fast. So by the time you're really a teenager, you really do be feeling like you grown, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even though you're still a kid or whatever. But yeah, for sure, I was 14. Were you, know? you raised with mom and dad in the house? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, because mm -hmm. you know how, like you say, you feel like you were grown as a teenager. Because a lot of times, when there's a father in the house, he tend to put the teenager back in his place. Because when a man, you know, boy feel like he's a man, and you know the man you really know, steps for up. Sure, for sure, but that's in the house. You know what I mean? Once you outside the house, when you at school, school to school, when oh, you in the streets, you act differently out exactly. there. Exactly. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like in the house, of course, the 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 parents gonna run the household. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You don't run nothing. But at the end of the day, when you go to school, you gotta. Do what you gotta do to survive that, you know what I mean? But so, were you acting up in school and stuff? I mean, I was a typical kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> typical kid. You know, I went to prison when I was a teenager, but I'm saying How that old? to say 18. I 18. just turned 18. But 
all in all, I mean, I wasn't just the baddest kid in school, but just a typical get in trouble, <laughs> get suspended, have fights at school. You know what I mean? No, the reason why I say that too, because you know, you always hear that there's, it takes a village to raise children, not mm-hmm. just you know the parents. Mm-hmm. So. Like where I'm from, you do something bad out on the street or you do something bad at school, it gets back to the parents and then they're going to handle it, the business when you get home. Right. So that's why I was trying to see if that, you know, applied to you. Right. Nah. nah now nah, it's nah. different. It's different. Siblings? Sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, my mom got six kids, three boys, three girls. I'm the wow. oldest boy. Yep. Third kid. That's man, awesome. That's dope, man, that you come from a big family there. Mm-hmm. So do you um I mean uh I mean do it did any of the others pick up on the filming like you doing or have nah. you been putting it in you know showing them out? Nah, uh-uh. like I mean like when you come from a big family, I don't know how everybody else's family is, but everybody kind of had their own path. You know what I'm saying? So my path was music, my other brother path was sports. You know what I mean? Uh, um, even filming wasn't even my passion. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. I was an artist. You know what I mean? I still mess with the music sometimes right now, but when I was locked up, I had read a book. All you need to know about the music business by Donald Passman. And when I read that book, it just changed my perspective on music and just made me get into the business side of it. So when I came home, I found a lane in shooting videos because I couldn't afford them myself as an artist. And so I was doing it for myself. And over time, I started making money from it, it invested more into it, invested uh attention to learning you know just about cameras and stuff and just kind of took off with it but it really wasn't even my passion it's still not right now i just know how to do it you know what i mean tell me, sorry but tell me one thing out of that book that really stuck with you that you think that um that helped you a lot that music is a business and a million dollars not just gonna fall out of the sky because you're talented because a lot of people might hear music on the radio or something and be like oh i'm better than it I know if they made it, I can make it, but that's not true. You might have more talent or more lyrical ability than somebody, but that don't mean you got the right business team behind you. You know what I mean? And just understanding that it's a business because you see it in interviews. People been saying this, artists and people, entertainers that's been in the business, if you ever watch interviews, they always say it's it's 90% grind, 10% talent. And people really just think people be saying that, but Mm -hmm. it's really true, you know what I mean? And me reading that book, because he was actually a music attorney. So this coming from somebody with experience in the game, he just kind of let it be known like, hey, this is a business and understand that it's a business. And if your business not together and you don't got the right team, there's nothing gonna happen good for you. And you said the only reason you fell into the film side of the business is because you couldn't afford Literally, doing- that's the only reason. It's like, I couldn't afford videos. I knew somebody that was shooting videos. I wanted some videos for my music. They told me a price I couldn't afford and I just started doing it myself. What's the first camera you started working with? Uh, Canon Rebel T3i. <laughs> and I still got it right now, even though I didn't, Got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of cameras that cost five thousand, ten thousand and stuff like that. I still got that camera. I paid like three hundred for it. Do you use it? I don't use it, but I still got it. It's because still it's work. your first. It still worked though. It still okay. worked. And I actually had to use it for some B roll one time and mixed it in with some Sony footage and it looked good. Well, I mean, just the craft and picking it up and just having the talent that you have. Everybody try to pick it up, but some people don't know, don't don't understand how to do right. the things that you're doing with the right. camera. I mean, a uh, few of the interv- uh, few of those uh, visuals that I've seen, man, you dope with it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Appreciate I've been you. watching them. I, ain't, I, I I watch LD a lot, but just the way you rocking that camera and the right. way you doing that drone. What kind of drone you got? Uh, right now, I got a a DJI Mini Two. Okay. Right now, I still got the old Phantom, man. And that Phantom gonna get it done too. Yeah, it's Phantom, just big. Got, that Phantom no, big. I, I got the. Sm- it's not that. Big. The I, I just, you know, oh, you got the middle. I got the, the middle because you know, like that Phantom three. I had a Phantom three. Yeah, that's big. the big. I had that one too. Yeah, and it's yeah. gonna get it done. But I, what I learned though, honestly, man, it's not really about the camera. It's about the person behind the camera. Because right. I know people with fifty thousand dollar red cameras personally, and like they work, it don't look that good. And then you so true. I've seen somebody. Start out to Trio Art. I don't know if y'all know who that is or not, but Trio Art, you know what I'm saying? He's from Port Arthur. He do. He's from Port Arthur, Texas. But he be in Houston, too. He shoot a lot of videos for people in Trio Art. I was on set with him years ago. He was shooting with some type of Nikon camera nobody knew about, and his videos looked like he was shot on a Red or Alexa Mini. You're killing him. Literally, you know what I'm saying? So it's not It's not the camera. Some no, people think you I could agree. just go buy something and just, oh, it's going to look good. No. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. People shooting videos off of iPhone and... The iPhone to go hard too. It's gonna, for sure. So it's just like you said, just pretty much how you take it and 
and how you basically you export all that different yeah. stuff start to take account right. when you're dealing with visuals right right and with you and your mind frame why are you recording that matters you know what i'm saying what you thinking about you know what i'm saying when you record and if you already know how you're gonna edit it you can make it way easier for yourself by just recording the certain way you know 14 I mean? years old when you left from up yeah. there yeah. and you came to houston yeah what part you really done spent a lot of time in Houston. Yeah, I, I be back and forth. My whole family still live in Detroit, so I still be in Detroit too. But when I moved to Houston, I was I moved to South Park. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you basically you came into that that world. I see you a lot of time. You do some stuff with Trade the Truth as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. How did you guys link up? Uh, man, shout out to Free Mac Biggers, man. Free Mac Biggers, Free Mac Biggers. Mac Biggers is an influential street guy out there. You know what I'm saying? He's an older dude. He back locked up now, but I was messing with him on the street side or whatever. He do a little music and uh, he had a feature with Trey years ago. We had did that and then my guy Junebug from uh, Third Ward, shout out to one, his name, 103 Ghetto on Instagram. Um, he had a relationship with Trey. I was shooting a video with him before and he had Trey on FaceTime to get a cameo or whatever. So just like, just through mutual people, that's how we initially met and then um, we started rocking super, super, super close a few years ago after he reached out to me for something on his own and then we just naturally link. Dope. All my relationships, if it's a music relationship and you see me constantly working with somebody, it's an organic relationship. It's not fake, it's not forced, you know what I'm saying? I just go off natural energy and vibes. We click, we click. And like once me and Trey got personal with each other and really got to have a couple conversations, you know, we developed a, a brotherhood, brotherhood type. Brotherhood, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I always been a dope dude whenever I would see him. Um, uh, at different places or mm. different things, so just a real stomp down Texas cat, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but but definitely, uh, I was going to ask you something I was thinking about earlier. I kept thinking, I'm saying, I know you ain't going to answer who has been kind of the most difficult one to work with. All the, you know, some angry who ain't going you know to answer that question. I'm just being real, like like it's some of them that's probably extra. You know what I mean? Want want this and that, and you like but damn. It, but to be totally honest with you, man. You can ask me anything. We transparent on here, and I know how to not answer something if I don't want yeah, to answer. Yeah, correct. So you, you don't got to feel yeah. nothing. You know what but I'm no, saying? But no, I just didn't. But the I thing didn't, about I didn't it definitely is, don't, don't want to bring shade on nothing. That no, definitely. No but so know. the thing about that question is this: the crazy part about it is it don't be the bigger names that be giving you the headaches. It be a bunch of people that some people would call nobodies. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody that's cheap. You know what I mean? Like the the people who really give you the most headaches is people either you doing some type of deal for, you looking out for, or you doing something for like the low, you know what I'm saying? People that's really paying for stuff, they really pretty much trust the process 90% of the time. It be the person that you doing the favor for that got special requirements or wanna take this out or take this out, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. Not to be a certain type of way, but a lot of women artists, you know what I mean? Even yeah. though I'm known for a lot of women artists, like honestly, you know what I'm saying? but. Working with them, you know, females, perfectionists, and very self-conscious. So you might shoot some for them and, oh, my hair lifting on this part. Can we change this? Or my stomach look big. And it's like, this how you look. Like, yeah. like yeah. what you want me yeah. to do about it? You know what I yeah. mean? But, yeah, I mean, we just come with the territory, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's it. I think that that's, that's something that the women part would be. Yeah, yeah, you got your hands full. Yeah, because a lot of women right. like don't, yeah. a lot of women don't understand like when they looking at especially up and coming artists, when you look at a Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, Trina video, right? You thinking like, oh, I want my video to look like that, or their hair wasn't messed up, but it's what they they have a hundred thousand dollar budget, so they got makeup artists, hairstylists on set to the point where if one hair strand go one way, somebody's there to fix it. When you don't have that type of budget, it just don't work like that. You know what I mean? Do you do you do prefer to work with more women than the males? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Nah, uh, uh, uh. it's reverse. You know what I'm saying? I like working with women. Be uh, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like the potential for them to give attention uh, is is way higher. Yeah, because right now that's where that's where everybody's right. Working but it is more industry. difficult working with women, though. It's mm -hmm. more difficult. You know what I mean? Like you got to pay more attention to the detail of it. You know? Well, you mean? already know what you're going into once you start working with women. Facts. Yeah, uh, Libra Jolie, man. Mm -hmm. I was asked about about her by my son. He he was trying to get her on the show early mm -hmm. on. I was like, who? Libra Jolie. Right, yeah, right, you need right. to get her. My son, the one do all that. He no, he tapped in. I don't try to be. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just interview. But at the end of the day, uh, how, I think how did you, how, told us too. 
I don't know if he did. Yeah, he did. He probably told some some fly out there. He ain't just <laughs> told us like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so how would you? Uh, how did you end up linking with her? And years ago, maybe 2014, around the time I first started shooting videos, she was one of the first. Well, she was the first actual female artist I worked with. Yeah, she we, she was the first female artist I worked with. This is way back in 2014. We worked. We instantly had a chemistry. She was a good listener, and we've been locked in ever since then, 2014. We got LD coming on the set, guys. He's becoming a regular on the show. Uh, uh, uh. He don't know how to get to the cameras. It's, help, make sure you don't mess nothing up, Steph. Watch him. He's, he's, he's a little more heavier set than what he used to be. <laughs> yeah, he ain't been working out. I ain't seen I'm him so in the gym. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, watch your watch thing here now. Don't get yourself hit right there. There you go, there you go, there you ah. go. Now, there you go. You finally made it in the set, huh? How you feeling? Okie dokie, pretty good, man. Pretty man, good. Man, good to have you again. Well, you know how we do it, man. We're going to make sure we get in here. Let me get that over there. Co host LD. Yeah, LD always come through and, 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 and bless my game when he in the city, yeah, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? The unofficial member. You man, know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you come down, we always yeah. going to put you on. How the you set. feeling? You looking a little tired. Not really, man. I mean, I actually feel good, man. I actually been getting a lot of work done. Loving the way the vibe is going with the with the show. We got a lot more work to do. We right. an uphill climb, you know. It's a lot of people out there that's pushing agendas and we trying to push uh, something to make sure we're seen as well. And, and we we guys like y'all on the set, I I, I should be okay. I, yeah. I want to ask you about that uh, No Cap, you know, that video. Mm-hmm. Uh, how was it shooting with them guys, whoever they was? You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These okay, old boys. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Kiki, and Kiki and Al. Kiki and Al. What was that like? Like, the process. I liked it. I love the, the vibe mm-hmm. where y'all guys done it. So. Oh, no, it was real. It was real, real cool. You know, I've been having a relationship with Keith for years, too. Good vibes, good energy. Like I say, he trusts the process. Most artists that trust the process and let a creator be a creator and let you do your job. That's like somebody that do an interview with you trying to tell you how to edit the interview. Like, let me do my job. Yeah. Did you ever go through that? So, who, me? Yeah. Have I've you been, have, yeah, You know people that want to make revisions to your... They don't come at me, man, because I right. try to keep myself out of the... They want it tomorrow. Yeah, they do, but they're oh, they yeah. happening. Like, I, I guess a bunch of them do that, yeah, but I don't impatient. never go like, by you that. Like, yeah. The, the, the interview's try. still on the car. They ask you how it's looking. Yeah, they it's want it. They want it now. But no, I mess with Key. You know what I'm saying? They have, like... If you've seen any Al D three hundred videos, come on, man. You man. Go, so the thing is, it's real easy. It was a real smooth process. It was fun. Yeah, and it, it was fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when you're doing these, do you like do you charge more when you go out of town? Town, you got to charge more. Well, I don't charge more for the video. I might give you a better price on the video really? to go out of town because you got to pay for the travel expenses. Okay, so it really you know. even out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's say I flew to New York to shoot something for some dudes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna charge you. Even the same price I even charge for a video in Texas, I'm gonna charge you less than that, but it's gonna probably equal more if you paying for my hotel Hell room no, for the flight and all that. That's dope, man. You know I sure. like that. Yeah, I be me personally when it comes to like uh, Miyaki, is well, I'm actually I'm gonna say like different regions, different markets. I feel like would benefit from using videographers in other markets. So. Um, it's it's not uncommon. Like if you from Dallas, and you already know how hard it is to uh to really get your shit really heard and stuff up here, it would behoove you in my mind to reach out to somebody like Miyaki to get you a, a a quality video and expose yourself to different markets. How me personally, how my buzz started growing was working with him. My videos was uploaded to his channel, and I started to make inroads in Houston and after a point in time when it got to a point it just seemed like I was more of a Houston artist as far as um with my fan base or whatnot it led me to moving down there you know so I just I just kind of think that people need to take advantage of knowing the the reasons behind picking a videographer and um you know taking advantage of moving differently you know, like people don't know how to really move in this game, man. Like you got videographers out here. You know, it's a lot of my boy. He's nice, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it to you plain and simple. You got videographers out here that they're charging you for their name, and you know, artists artists don't have a lot of money for one. They trying to get the most bang out of their bucks for two. You coming into a game that 
as an artist, everybody is set up to take money from you. You know, hey, I, give me this, give me this, give me this. So even though the cost might not be way expensive, everybody wants something from the artist. So when you charging a person as a videographer to put their stuff on your channel, then a lot of that shit turn into trick bait. Mm. Like you got people with a million subscribers, so to speak. Um, they they telling you they got they got a million fake subscribers. They telling you to pay this extra five or six hundred dollars or whatever to put your video on their channel. They might not even shoot your video. They might say, well, it's a thousand dollars for me to shoot it and put it on my channel. You looking at the fact that they got a million subscribers as you know what, I can get my video in front of that crowd. Man, these people done paid for this whole <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Versus um, Deezy, uh, filmed by Miyake Page, who's actually got a proven track record of artist Meek Mill signing people off of his page. Shout out to Young Ro. Uh, Libra Jolie is one, the, one of the latest, but the, it's a long list and he very modest. Ski taste. It's a lot of people that's done got signed off of his page. I credit a lot of my traction to not only what he's done taught me as an artist coming out the prison. Let me say this too. You know, this was my next door neighbor on medium custody in prison. You know what I mean? So, disclaimer, full disclaimer. So, for he's not no nerd nigga with a camera is what I'm saying. Just a nerd that's done picked up a camera, went to school and trying to go out here and shoot some videos and shit like that. That's not what he is. So, when I look at what he's done built and, and accomplished, and when you look at the, uh, the artist that's fucking with him, and they do real artists, working artists, rich artists that trust him. And then for those that's taking it, making that transition from the streets over into getting signed and whatnot, man, it's not too, I'm talking about consistently. We ain't talking about, yeah, remember in 2010 when I got this, you know, it might be, you know, some of the guys that's up here, like in this Dallas market. Nah, he been consistent with getting artists, deals, notoriety, and all of that. And I just, well, you know, no. and I think that's, that's a big, big up, you know. Uh, also, you know, you say y'all was locked up. Mm -hmm. uh, did y'all, y'all, y'all conversated when y'all was locked up? Oh, for sure. You ain't Definitely. rock with the nigga or you rock with him? <laughs> no, I rock with him. I, I even wrote him when I got out. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that been to prison know that. You any, rock with this nigga? Anytime somebody finna go home from prison, they gonna say, I'm gonna write you and then you never hear from him. Never I was one of them people that really... I got no out, bad. I wrote him. I yeah, didn't know sure. he was going to be no videographer. Sure. No, none of us knew I didn't know was. I was going to be no videographer in prison. This wasn't my plan. And yeah, no we didn't meet on regular. You know, we well, was in medium was, custody yeah, together. Was medium custody fucking up together. together yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so. I, I think I think that's something to be noted, man. You never know what God is doing, man, in the midst of whatever you got going on. You know, I think a lot of times we, we try to figure it out too fast. We got to mm -hmm. sit back and just understand the ride. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Trust the process. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just, I, I think that's dope, man, that y'all really linked up like that. So First Day Out, man, that's one of my favorite <laughs> songs, favorite videos. I When I'm trying to challenge a nigga about that, <laughs> I'm putting this all in the nigga. Look, nigga. Yeah. We, shot five you know videos. <laughs> we shot five videos today in that same day. For real? <laughs> I no, said, literally. Look, look at this nigga, y'all ain't rocking like this nigga. You know, that's the way I do people, and they rock every time. So, I, kudos to y'all, man. I think that's that, a that great look, collab, man. That quality, that look, and all that. Um, as far as on his channel, it's big fish on his, it's lots of people with millions of views on his channel. You know what I mean? Like, I got popping on his channel, but there's people, people are getting signed off of his channel. So when you talking about getting a video shot for yourself and you gonna take that anywhere from that five to that $1,000 or whatever and you talking about spending your money with somebody, you really have to understand the nature of why are you messing with somebody on a video. It's more to it than the skill. For example, somebody might have just graduated from school that's excellent with you know all of the different things that it takes to be a great videographer. But if you haven't established a fan base on your, it's just like I can just start interviewing somebody tomorrow. It might don't be boss talk one on one, but I, I might got quality cameras. Like remember when you used to talk all the time about your cameras and I all that. I got some good cameras in this hole. But now yeah. it's done. It's done. <laughs> yo, Fat that ain't was going down. You know Everybody what's done happen? That, that ain't no longer the selling point. You don't talk like that no more. Not really. Now because it's more about your work and what you actually doing 
day, like I'm really putting this work in. I really done logged these hours in. I'm yeah. really, my videos is hitting this mark and it's about quality content. I'm dealing with it like this. It ain't even about the, no. the great cameras that I got. No, it, really, it really not, and, and I tell my wife all the time, uh, I could take it up a notch right now, you know, but I'm I'm letting it, I'm building it the way I'm Take I it up a notch. Meaning to make it a whole different scene. Well, think about you know, it, take it up different a different stuff. You know right. what I mean? But now y'all is really look at no, I got I got stuff going on right, that right, I, right. I got gotta gotta do some remodeling and stuff. I ain't gonna let y'all in on too much. I, I my guy back there, he not want me to say too much. I okay, you ain't wanna right try now. to tell. Yeah, <laughs> but it definitely a lot going on with what we got going and it's dope to be in the uh in the whole circle with some guys like yeah. y'all who really working and really serious about it. And we crowd. got Money Moses who is like my man, favorite on my favorite on the show. They they Money Moses man. Man, I can't wait. We got so we got hey, we got a lot of stuff going on. Money Moses wanted to let me ask this. these some questions. I'm taking over. Let you me all, you've been taking over ever since you got here. Oh, you okay. ain't noticed that. Wait let, let me let, let me Deezy, ask some questions. You right? Hey, Deezy, we can't we we can't do this, man. All right, go ahead. Let me ask. Look, go okay. ahead. I'm gonna let you rock. What can you tell? What kind of information do you have for upcoming artists? What's some of the pet peeves of when a person? Uh, Pay for a video. Mm. Name name a few of the things you know. Your top three things that people do that's wrong when they when they trying to get you know this boss talk one on one. When people are trying to get videos, what's some of the common mistakes that they make when uh, as far as you know dealing with somebody like you? What what, what uh, do they do that's with somebody wrong? Like me, some of the shit I that get like on your number nerve. one is being impatient. You know what I mean. That's number one. Being impatient. You know what I mean. Like. A lot of times, people don't understand that you're not the only person. Well, they're not the only person you're dealing with. You know what I mean? So I probably shot 30 videos this month. You come to me. You think that the moment that I shoot your video, that you're the top priority or the main focus of my life. Like, I don't got something to do tomorrow. Mm. Or I ain't just do something yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So it's being impatient. Another thing is not allowing the creator to be a creator. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you know you want it a certain way you need to do it yourself you know what I'm saying like, ain't nothing right. wrong with giving your input on something or just having a general idea but to try to stop like make me do something that you want me to do that mean I work for you I don't work for you I work for me you know what I'm saying we right. doing business together and then the third thing I'll probably say uh, would be listening to other people other people like besides them like when I'm doing business with people I like to deal with I like dealing with the people that's paying me. I don't like talking to an entourage member. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, so, so, so people pay for videos to get shot? Uh-huh. The rapper pay for a video? Mm -hmm. And then you come you come pull out the camera or something and then they old lady tell you that you need to Yeah, they, get this they girlfriend or they homeboy giving them ideas. <laughs> I think you need to do this. I think you need to stand on top of the bridge. You need to get a scene over here. Like, yeah. shut up. Right. You know what I mean? Just let me let let me do what I do. I got it. If it look crazy, I'ma let you know. It's my brand, so at the end of the day, I'ma try to give you the best look that I can give you. But extra input from outside people, yeah, I don't really like that. Well, I, I think you I think you you yeah, you gonna get that though. These folks is hell. Yeah, yeah, dealing with the people that you're dealing with on the definitely. level is, and like you said earlier the lower like when they really definitely. really don't really have it but they definitely. trying to get it and trying to understand it right. they gonna come at you with all no, kinds of sure, stuff. but that's why you gotta be firm in what you do like you know what I mean like me I'm respectful you know what I'm saying no matter what you know what I'm saying you could be a serial killer you could be a, a bookworm a nerd I'm gonna give you the same respect that I want you know what I'm saying it's it. so it's respect until it's disrespect so that's me anyway but you got to be firm with people i kind of be firm like when i'm doing business with people with these artists because a lot of them don't really understand it ain't nobody never told them before so you got to be the one to tell them so they can know that it's not cool if somebody walk in your house with their shoes on and you don't, and, and you don't want you got to tell them mm -hmm. be careful you know with I mean? shaking the table yeah, <laughs> I just—I I really like I said when when I look at the quality of what you're doing. Um, what what would be your what would be your ideal camera if you had to if you had a budget? That Wait you, a minute. Uh, let me ask this question, please. You asking uh, our what industry? What would be your ideal camera for you if you if you had a budget and you could go to whatever number you wanted to go to? What what camera would you want to work with? 
honestly, right you now. You asking Colonel Sanders for yeah, the recipe, man. Right you now, asking, no, right now nah, you said. I'm talking about the big boy. It may be a Komodo. Nah, it nah, it'll be the Alexa Mini. But you see what I'm saying? Because yes, people have a, a a thing that they want, but, yeah, it'll but be you the, can't it, really get there because it's it'll crazy be, numbers for it. It'll be the Alexa Mini. You know what I'm Is saying? It, I, I, what they run about, you know? It's about 20000 Yeah, that, it's, you so know, it's, better, red, it's better than the red. The red is just the name. Okay. What people don't understand, I don't know if you probably do know this, and I'm saying you don't know, but a lot of people don't. Red is just the name. Correct. That's like saying a Toyota, a Toyota what? A Camry, a Corolla. Red is just the brand. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's different reds. The only thing about reds in particular is you got to build around them. Okay. So you might buy a camera that costs 20000 just for the body. 30 but, to rig it out. Yeah, 30 to rig it out. You know what I'm saying? And so... You gotta you come with a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying, that you need. You need extra this, extra this, you need to buy the handle, you gotta buy the, the monitor, you gotta buy the cards, you gotta you know what I'm saying? I don't come with that, you know what I'm saying? So I me, gotta check that camera out, guys. Yeah, that Alexa Mini that Alexa Mini, I gotta yeah. check it out. Red, red literally just the name. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I done seen like I said, I seen a dude take a nigga to school with a little G seven uh camera. But the industry yeah. don't and it, was, it, it nigga had a red and uh we was at a TI party and my little old photographer. Videographer went down through that on that nigga. But before before yeah. we but before we get off the industry question, because you know you know he don't want to. Yeah, but I want to say this. You know what I'm saying it ain't like I said earlier. It's not really the camera, man. Because like the game changed. You know back when you used to watch movies, New Jack City come on. You see the buildings and stuff. They was having a camera on the helicopter. Now you can go buy you a drone for two hundred dollars and get that same exact shot. Wow. So it's the same stuff with cameras, man. You don't need no hundred thousand dollar camera. Like you really don't. You can go to the pawn shop, get you a camera out the pawn shop, get you the right lens, invest some time and energy into editing the right way, and nobody gonna be able to know the difference. If and I get a project from from now till uh, uh, I say I need this video, and, and how long is it gonna take you to get it back to me? And, and this is when I need it. Can you do it in a week, three days? Oh me, I, you can get your video a twenty four hour turnaround okay. for me if you pay for it. You yeah, gotta pay for yeah. it. So I, you, when I first started, I really handicapped myself. Working real fast, getting people their video back tomorrow because that's what built my brand. Getting your video back tomorrow when other people was taking three weeks. You come to me, you get your video tomorrow, and so it start being common knowledge. Man, go to Deezy, fuck with Deezy, he gonna get you your video back tomorrow. You that's know what good I'm saying? Quick but serve, quick serve, and good quality. It handicapped me later on. It backfired later on because now that I'm booked and I done built the brand and got sixty thousand subscribers and thirty million views, and I'm busy now. I'm in Dallas now. I'm doing. I'm busy now, right? Like I'm here doing this interview with somebody right now thinking <laughs> that they video supposed to be in there. I know it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> I'm busy now. So now I can't get you a video tomorrow unless you pay me for it. You know what I'm saying? So now if you got the fee, you get your video tomorrow. If not, be patient. I got you. Now I'm not going to take long to get, I'm not going to take longer than a certain amount of time to get somebody their video back because I understand that as an artist myself that I don't feel like waiting two months to get my video back. You know yeah. what I mean? Dope, dope. I'll tell you something else that uh, I feel like a lot of people don't really know when it comes to, you know, I've heard you say this, E. I've heard you say that, um, you know, like the DJs. You might say about the DJs, like, man, how come these DJs is not breaking new art, blah, blah, blah? Have you ever said that? I say it all the time. Why they don't play their music when they're the in DJ their face all the time? The DJ has been <laughs> replaced in the hierarchy of breaking artists. Artists are broke, broken by videographers. No, DJs break them still too. I'm not right. How could you break them? How could you break an artist? I'm not that, right. Nigga, listen, if you go into the strip club and place, you tell me them DJs. Strip club can't, is not the on, only place. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you this. I you don't believe that. But I'm, 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 well, I'm gonna tell you this, man. Shout out to DJ Yakum in Houston. Y'all can look break them, can he? But nah, Let's but go. this what DJ Yakum told me though. He said that right now, for them to play your stuff, they looking on YouTube. I they, get that. They want to see views. Oh, this song high. Oh, it got a million views. Oh, this I high. Could, I could see that. The streets messing with this. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's I think it's about even. But this definitely a visual. I feel like right now we in a visual era. I, I could, People I could care more about too. who the person is than even what they sound like. You could just look look a certain way. It's the visual aesthetic of it. So, so I you, get what you're saying. You think that it's just it's just a video? I'm saying I don't that, think so. that I don't think it's just a video. Watch this. Nah, hell no. It's never no just. Don't try to bait me. You've been doing this too good. You trying to turn it into But let me tell you this. In the last six years. Or six years, I would like to see a DJ who's broken more artists than Deezy. Mm. In the what, last six years, oh, there's some out there. 
It's something Where about they that. I want to say this though. I don't really like making. Put, put the compa- I don't like making the comparisons because you know this is my guy. You know what I'm saying. So you know he going You know you gonna go hard for your people. Exactly. A lot of people gonna you gonna hear titles and. The, the hardest this or the best that and this. I don't really like comparing myself to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm humble. I do what I do, and if you know, you know. You can Google me, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not interested in who I'm breaking and who I'm not breaking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, that's cool. But in in real life, <laughs> in, I'm talking about real life, not a yeah. not not a made up life. Right. In real life, mm. in the last five six years, mm. there's not been anybody in this state. Mm-hmm. The big great state of Texas, who's broken more, more artists than Daisy. I probably would probably agree with that. I would ask for somebody to produce them, produce people that have been signed, who from the work that they've done with this particular individual has gone on to get signed. Which is for a lot of people, that's what breaking is. Like it, for if if you didn't nobody know you five weeks ago. Like how we how we found out about Glorilla after one song, one video, even though she been doing this work for a long time, been mm-hmm. putting in this work for a long time. What's going unsaid in that video, the one that went viral and got her this and that, is the quality of that video is insane. I seen it, it reminded me of a DZ video. The first I seen it when it was like twenty thousand right. views or whatever. I shot it straight to him like this shit gonna be viral. This shit gonna be crazy. Right. And every hour from that point, it was gaining hundreds of thousands. You know what I'm saying? But there's a certain level to the quality of a video that can really accelerate a song. It's more to this game than audio. When you're talking about executing as an artist, like when people talk about me or as a, a not, not just me, but anybody, but I'm going to use myself. There's a look to my videos. There is certain things that are familiar in my videos, whether it be niggas, whether it be uh, whatever it is. And these things are not accidental. They're not accidentally there. These things, it's specific. It's a way of going about handling business that creates a look and a familiarity to a, a certain artist. This man has done that over the course of quite a few artists. Right, so I just want to say this. It ain't... Like and it's not just the videographers. This is the people like your platform too, podcast. You know what I'm saying? Podcast. I feel like a lot of people behind the scenes don't really get the credit that they really deserve. That's beat makers, graphic designers, engineers, podcast creators, content creators. Like a lot of times, a lot of times we do build artists up. We, I'm saying, everybody behind the scenes build artists up, and the artists might, you know what I'm saying. Get I'm all very the cool with it. the biggest DJs in the world. One of them. Uh-huh. Stop yeah, it. They, yeah. they gonna, he going to tell you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The, yeah. the video, them videos is what they're looking at. You know, I so. just feel like it's just a collaborative effort. You know what I'm saying? With everybody. You know what I'm saying? I don't like taking all the credit at the end of the day. Well, at the end of the day, I think it's a, it, it, like, like you said, it's a bunch of things sure. that's going on. And when you look at an artist, you're looking at a different. I mean, most people go back and look, look maybe look at that artist. Like when I looked up, uh, what's her name? Glorilla or whatever. Thanks. I went and looked at her interviews. I started trying to see who is this person, you know, that mm-hmm. people going crazy over, you know. So, and I, and, and, uh, Definitely some talent, you know, talent there. That song's big. Hopefully she can, you know, you know, come behind that and do what she do. But I think she will because she with a good group of people. Whether she does you know or I mean? doesn't, it's done. It's done. Yeah, but it's still something to your craft and making yourself better and better and better. Of course. I mean, Kanye was good when he did uh, Through the Wire, but now it's a whole different level, brother. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but no, you... Uh, you definitely are one of those guys, man, that I've had to hear about through this guy ever mm. since he been coming around me. Mm. Yeah. He loved the fact. I, I like the way y'all get down for us. You know, I didn't know that you were seeing a nigga rapping in jail. He was in rapping prison. as well. Yeah. Who was, was you out rapping this nigga? Uh, Let's like, be real. Was you out I mean, rapping honestly, this I'm gonna nigga? Keep it, I'm gonna keep medium it. custody. All right, taking this so nigga. I'm gonna out? tell you. You know what I'm saying? Taking a nigga to so, the jail. So you got that? You so great. Oh, I'm glad you turned it up. He done turned into whatever. I told you. Whatever, man. So what happened was this. I've been rapping my whole life. I don't. He probably been rapping his whole life. This the thing. How prison really ran. Anybody that's been locked up know this. It's about who was there first. 
He had already been doing time way, way, way before me. So this already the people's champ. You know what I'm so saying? So you, if you, if it hadn't been that scenario, it probably would have went a little different. Yeah, been more fit. <laughs> so if he came to the unit, hey, look, if he came anybody though, this for anybody. If I was yeah. already on the unit, literally established. That's the my only name, thing you had. Hey. Nigga. It ain't the only thing. Yeah, no, nah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Let's be real. Was I accept it. I'm not going to let you. But that's my guy though. But you know, Robbie edge. is competitive. So everybody that used to go to Tyleen, shout out to Briscoe Unit. Everybody that was ever on Tyleen. Talim, yeah. everybody know that Talim, you came down there to kill everybody. That's just what it is. You get up there and rap, it's like a talent show, and every week everybody coming with their best. You know what I'm saying? What they really stuck stuff. out with, with to, to you about LD when he was rapping during this time? Uh, the same thing right now that people are hearing the free world stick out to them. Just basically, just he been talking about certain stuff. You know what I'm saying that everybody else wasn't talking about, like terms like the universe the law of attraction and speaking stuff into existing he kind of was already hip to that that's the person that introduced me to that language anyway so putting that type of stuff in music when everybody else was just talking about you know the regular street stuff well the first day out was that the first one y'all did together what was the first video y'all did together was it first day out the first video that we ever did it was first day out. as far as shooting it was first day out yeah, it was first day out, but we shot five videos in that same day, literally. Yeah, but first day out was the first one. For wow, sure. yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh -huh. That's crazy. When uh, when you look at just being in the Houston area, and, and have you done some work in Dallas, or you don't come down? I, uh, I have. I've done some work out here before. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I got a, a few people I'm cool with out, out here, not not necessarily on the music scene per se. You know what I'm saying? But I mess with Dallas. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, I'm just Dallas. asking somebody. What do you think with. about the Dallas the here Dallas music scene? Like what 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 is your overall? And I'm you know we on we gonna do this. Let's we on Boss it. Talk One On One. Let's do it. We on Boss Talk One On One. We in the heart of D Town right now. You know, shout out all my people up here. We already know what it is. Okay. That being said, like, what's your overall perspective about the Dallas hip hop scene, and what do you think? Well, let me ask you that first. What's your overall perspective about the Dallas? Man, music? I, I, I rock with Dallas, man. I really like. I'm not just saying this because I'm in Dallas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody, I got a shag haircut right now. Literally, let's go, I got man. a hat on. Let's go, man. I got a, I got a shag cut in my hair right now. Everybody yeah. in Houston looking at me crazy. Why you got the Dallas haircut? <laughs> I'm not from Houston, man. I don't give. A I, I rock with Dallas too As far as the music scene I don't know too 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 much about it But I can tell you this though You know what I'm saying I feel like I mess with Trap Boy Freddy But I'm gonna yeah, so. take it back A little further You know what I'm saying When I first came home You know what I'm saying I'm not really a club guy But you had Young Nation They had the They had, they they the had stuff on lock You know what I'm saying And I feel like If Young Nation was out During this TikTok era right now They would be going crazy viral Because yeah. they was viral Before viral was a word You know what I'm saying so I, mean, I mess with Dallas, you know what I'm saying? The whole music scene, I'm not really tapped into it enough to have a valid opinion on it, but hmm. the couple artists that I do know about, I, I mess with, I like their style. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what about what about Fort Worth? I don't know too much about Fort Worth besides Go Yayo. Yeah, Yo. I feel like Go Yayo, Yo, I gotta say this on camera, you know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like he get his full cards, you know what I'm saying? So he, he really opened, he did open the doors. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Oh, yeah, open the doors? No, he definitely did open some doors, not mm -hmm. all the doors. He but definitely it, was somebody that they kind of... He brought a light to him? They kind of... And not on... Man, Soulja Boy, a lot of people was influenced Not nah, for sure, for sure, definitely. Like a light. Right. Like I'm saying, like he was high. 50 Cent, 50 Cent. Supreme, 50, I know you out there. Listen what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Supreme. 50, 50 Cent really, literally posted this man. That boom. Like 50 Cent really posted this on his real page. Man, I mess with Go Yo, yeah, Yo, Free Go Yo, yeah, Yo. Despite whatever little beefs people and stuff got going on, that don't got nothing to do with me. I'm talking about music when we talking about music I messed with Go Yo Yo I like that he opened up the door for a city that went known globally on the hip hop scene and then people really start rocking with him so I messed with him and you know what I'm saying like I say him and uh, Trap Boy Freddy got one of my favorite songs you know what I'm saying as far as some like local ticks and stuff so you know I yeah. mess with him I'm rocking with Big X the plug right now Big X the plug check him out Big check X that's out. Big yeah, X ain't playing no games right now from Dallas yeah, yeah. okay yeah, he's yeah. serious okay with now I've been seeing him on a few say cheese but I ain't just tapped in go into check him, him out All right. I also know I like to make sure that I talk about people that don't necessarily get their card as far as making moves and helping things to be like right. what they is What's your thoughts, if you have any, about Rainwater? Like, what do you see? How do you see Rainwater's work? Like, his real work, which is, you know, breaking all this hip-hop. I mean, honestly, I'm going to keep it a book. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I feel like Rainwater, no matter if people like him 
or people dislike him, he do his job. Because we in here talking about him right now, that's yeah. a sign of you doing your job. When you when you a manager or a PR person for somebody, your job is to make sure that you in that conversation and your brand and your artist is in that conversation. And I, I feel like he do I an excellent job. Of for it. sure. I feel like he do an excellent job of what he supposed to do. I mean, as far as like being in the headlines, being talked about in the interview, you know what I'm saying? Stuff I think like he got that. one of the hardest jobs that it he, is he in the state. He do a good job at what he do, though, you know what I'm saying? Man, he came over here and, and gave some uh, valid info on, on the fact of after you go through all of the stuff, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then facing the fact of Mo3 being gone, it was dope the way he laid it out. I, I just, I feel the sincerity in it, and I feel like a lot of times sitting behind these microphones, we can help somebody mm -hmm. through situations that people go through. Right. And I think he took this platform and used it for that benefit. You know, I feel like recently. he got a very, you know very I mean? hard job because Dallas is a gangster ass city. So when you're talking about trying to make it work on some music where, where there is not really like a high level of belief, um, you know, I, I don't believe there's a high level of belief in music here. So what I mean by that is, I think it's hard to make, I think it's hard to get people behind you here. Mm -hmm. So when you able to really like um, have a, a track record that shows success, you know, I think that got, you gotta look at it different here. I gotta grade it higher here than in Houston. You know I can saying? tell you right now when it, when I look at people that can break artists, uh, uh, this guy is one of those guys that can get you in a deal. You know, he knows how to get it. He was the only guy that was here on the Grammys or the Bill, but he was invited to these things for his accomplishments. So that says a lot within itself, bro. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you don't see a lot of people there. But I feel like when it comes to breaking artists, man, it really don't matter where you from. I think it more so matter about your grind and are you willing to go get it? Because you could be from somewhere like you got Beyonce, Travis Scott, you know, these people from Houston, but it ain't like they got broke in Houston. They're just from Houston. You know what I'm saying? You could be from anywhere. Floyd Mayweather is from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's not from Detroit. He's not from Flint. Nothing like that. But this is probably one of the most known, if not the most known, sports figure in history. Possibly. You're right. You're right. But the reality of it is Dallas don't have hip hop infrastructure. It, it's, it, I don't know if I agree with that. Dallas got hip hop infrastructure. You got some guys here that done made numbers that done did. You got platinum artists. You got some time. platinum artists here in this city. You mm -hmm. got Duro. You got different people that done did. You got DOC here. Mm -hmm. You can't say that we don't have a foundation. If I was to, oh, you know what I'm saying. You, oh, you got you, hey, listen, playing, listen, you got a hell of a games. foundation. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You got some patriarchs here, man. You got some people that got them. Do you plaques, not know that you know I'm well saying? loved in Dallas? You know Why you trying to do that? I like, didn't you, say that. You trying? I feel I'm like you're really trying to create. Yeah, it. I'm, I'm right. Look right. At you. You looking, you're trying to yeah. go over there. But when you look at it, you just you trying about, to make no. an adversary. But thing? like no, like when you look at it and you look at some of the artists that we've interviewed here that have those accomplishments. It's not many. You right about that because Dallas me, is not as big as, as Houston either. To be honest, bro, with but you. don't count Dallas you, by itself. You got to count it well, as the I'm metro. I'm telling place. you, it's a different vibe. It's a different. Now, so look, we could just look, look. Keep it. This I'm gonna ask y'all this. I'm gonna really ask y'all to do this. Okay. Keep it really real because it can benefit somebody. Don't always say the nice thing because it's somebody yes. out there right now that's an up and coming artist that really want to make it. If y'all got them believing in them pipe dreams and when they going out there to try. This is what I'm saying. But again, I'm just saying that to say this. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, it's not a bite. It's about. Yo grind You got Post Malone He from Dallas like, Hey the Boy that boy hit him with a Hit him with hey, a wait, real wait, big wait, wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Dang, I'm just boy. saying that to say In the same breath As I'm saying that I'm just saying Like he's from here But he took the show On the road Just like a Beyonce yeah. Took the show on the road Travis Scott Took the show on the road Eminem from Detroit man, Took the show on the road What I'm really saying Yellow Beezy is from here, like, from here. Shout, out shout out You know what I'm saying Shout out from here nigga. Shout out Yellow Beezy For sure His career is a blessing let me tell you something, man. In Houston, Texas, man, there is every literal level of artist success in hip hop. Yeah, you got the Beyonce's and the Travis Scott's and all of this type of stuff, but you also got the D-Babies, the, 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 the people that are on 
on every level of the game. But when you say it's a, wait, when whoa, you whoa, say whoa, Beyonce, whoa. you gotta say Erica Badu and all these other people. You got a lot of people in Dallas too, Look, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't, it, it's don't, serious don't over turn here. it into a. You know what I'm it, it's not a. It's no, not a what we not gonna do is make this a Houston and Dallas thing. And that's what he's I doing. I ain't from Houston, but I'm saying we ain't gonna make this Houston Dallas. I'm not from Houston. I'm saying what I'm saying is you know what I mean that we got different levels of artists and different places. Well, let me okay. Let's start. Let's let's clear it in and with then better, move past it. with better with no. better. Let's move past and it with man. better energy. Do you think that there is people that move to Dallas specifically to chase a dream in hip hop? I couldn't say they do, but I can tell you this, and let me say this: I feel like your talent, if you got something that's good and special, I don't care where you at. If you hit, if you hit with the right, you know what I mean, with the right talent at the right time, with the right individual, you never know what can happen with this internet, bro. Thanks. I don't care what you say. I'm in the grill. I'm that. telling you right now, your talent gonna make room for you, bro. I don't care who you are. If that talent hit right, just like if if, if your girl that F and F would have been here, if the people see it and they feel like it's damn, time that's it. Your time. They gonna take you. Her grind. We can move was forward, man. Let's move forward, man. Let's <laughs> yeah. move past it, man. Let's go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause laughs> shout out to. Boss talk one on one. Yeah, boss no, talk one on one. I think the main thing to understand is that rap, like you said earlier, is a competitive. Uh, it's competitive, bro. Like, and and whatever town you in, whether you in East Texas, yes, whether sir. you in Dallas, whether you in Vegas, whether you in Cali, whether you are down in New Orleans or Memphis, where it's, it's very a lot dope. of my people suffering in East Texas. Why y'all saying that? Running around down there trying to be seen and heard and need to hit the road. Need to go. To Houston, need to go to that. Why people are saying, like, oh, they need to be just doing this here or doing. The reality of it is, it's not an outlet down there. It's not infrastructure down there. So uh, there has been people that have been spinning their wheels for a lot of a lot of the time. And if I hadn't have got out and had um, somebody like Daisy, is somebody that I knew that uh, uh, enrolled for me in Houston, then. I would have definitely. I could have easily been one of those people trying to approach it in in from a traditional way and wondering why I'm not getting the results that I want to get. There is talent in East Texas for sure, but when you're talking about the likelihood, like I'm somebody that that was having basically twenties of thousands of views on videos that has made inroads in a, a hip hop career. Man, you you're not doing twenties of thousands of views is not enough if you down in East Texas to garner you no type of outside success. Coming down there, of course you gotta apply a lot of different things to it, but when you talking about you know, you got to be where the action at, man. You gotta I play you gotta play the game where they playing the game in order to really see some success. Now, yeah, you can, you know, play the lottery. Wish on a star. At the end of the day, Glorilla is from Memphis, man. But you got to understand. One of the though, regions. Even, I think the process says something within itself. You know what I mean? Like when you when you know that there's a the, that you enjoying the process, when you're doing it and you're having a good time, like when I see Smoothie or any of those guys, or, or any of those, they're having a great time. Shout man. out my homie I mean, Smoothie. Guess what? Real. He want to make some the, money. But not only. Like making money is talk. what this is let about. Let me hear how you just cut <laughs> back in. Let, let, let me be real too, with you, man. All, all I'm saying is you got Smoothie, you got uh, Seco P. They doing, they having a great time. Young niggas just having a good time. Yeah. And you got Mama Scott. Mama Scott and them having a damn good time. Shout out Mama Listen, Scott. Let me just be people. real with you. People having a good time out here. Life is too short, bro. You know what I'm saying? When niggas is flying to Miami, hanging out over here with Boosie or going over here and doing, they doing what they want to do. Oh, I thought it you, was you know the know music business, no, not the music no, hangout. No, I'm saying, no, they making music with these people when they go. Oh, oh I thought you it know was, the, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? It's so. really my bad because I thought it was all about putting in a certain amount of money and then receiving well, you, that along with a profit At the end of the day, back. you got to enjoy the process. You don't even oh, know okay. if you're going to be able to make it to get that money. You know what I'm saying? You better enjoy the day because you might not be here tomorrow, brother. Thanks. How did you, you end you up going? How did you when end you, up? I'm talking about the process of the music, flying here, having a good time, like we about to go somewhere. 
Every time it ain't all about like Let me I, let you I'm know that older, these is you know not necessarily saying? in it to have a good time. He's you're in not, it to pay his you're bills. Not in it. You're not yeah, in it. It's, you it's just cool. wanna, I don't want to do nothing that I don't love doing, he bro. Got Life's to, too short. He you got to shoot saying? that video and he got to get that bread for it. He got to get his money for doing that. You I'm going to be honest it's with you. Business. If it was just about money, y'all wouldn't be sitting in here it right now. It ain't about hmm. just about money. Did you hear what I just said? Because I damn sure ain't in here just because I'm making a lot of money, nigga. I see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I already had Relationships worth more than money. Yeah, you building relationships is way worth more than money. I you love, know that too. I love that. I love you know that. That's the fact. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is Boss Talk 101, man. All I'm saying is love that it. process is nice. You know what I'm saying? I love what you Man, we've been fly out here in a minute and we've been everywhere. Chicago, we having a good time because you don't have And them numbers are steady look, increasing. It don't matter about them numbers. Your numbers is increasing. Even if, even if Boss Talk wasn't here, we still were having a good time. Right. You know what I'm saying? That good time you know, is done, it's done led to it's done led to seeing some residuals, huh? Not really. Not like that. Not yeah. like not not like you, what I'm putting in. You could see it in Did you hear what I'm just saying? It it gotta move up. Cause yeah. for what we done put into this, it's way more you came in here with four or five cameras wrapped around you. The first day you walked in here, the table was here, the yeah. everything been was here. Some good cameras? I'm an established business man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> But no, nah, man, I love the fact, man. Let me tell you something. It, it, it about me argue, man. You one of the guys, man, when I look at the visuals, man, in the H-Town era, who would you say is like your competition down there? Because there's competition everywhere. Again, like here you got, again, like, like, low, you got a bunch, you know. Right, you right. Got, no, for sure, for sure. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to put it like fun. this, and I'm dead serious, you know what I'm saying, when I say this, and I'm saying, I don't feel like I have competition. Not saying I'm better. It's a lot of good videographers right now that's making noise right now. You got Cash Jundi right now. Shout out to Cash Jundi. You got O Shot You Films. You mentioned Cam Guys earlier. That's, that my, that's my boy. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? I've been knowing Cam Guys when he was first starting. Dope. You got Cam Guys. It's a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? You got Skrilla Montana, that's grade A media. It's a lot of people making they. Are you familiar with my boy Twan Visuals? Yes. And uh, I got to use this to plug. Uh, now, he was saying from Houston, though, but I'm listening. Oh, okay. Now, he, now he, he was saying in the Houston area. He was saying, no, I'll share that. You said Cam. Cam guy not from Houston. He, he, from, he, from, he from up state. And somewhere. shout out T Mash. But he here, though. Right, right, right. But my thing. Who you is, say? T Mash. T Manley. T Manley. Yeah, yeah, shout out Houston. 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 Out of Texas County, it's a lot of it's a it's lot a of, of it's a lot of dope videographers out there, and I'm glad you asked me that because a lot of times everybody will make everything a competition and put the next man down to uplift themselves. I don't do that, you know what I mean? I feel like what's for me is for me, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you mess with me, you mess with me. I don't have to knock the next man to try to get you to come mess with me, you know what I mean? But it's a few, it's a lot of people. But Cash Jundy doing this thing right now, Oh Shot You Films doing this thing right now, like like in a major way. Uh, and you got this dude Op Films, he doing this thing in a major way. Then you got me, you know what I'm saying? Man. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive, number one. From everywhere in the world? I wouldn't give a damn. Yo, Are any genre, anything. Ooh. He would say Money Mike, was it? <laughs> we we talk about rapper, we talk about artists, period. Every, artists, oh, should we everywhere. talk about, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we say, we, However you do it. Beyonce. Right. That's your number one? Yeah, Beyonce, for sure. I'm and dead love, serious. Beyonce. Love Beyonce. Real number Beyonce. Two? Beyonce, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Okay. And then I'm going to go. Number three. This hard. It's pretty hard. Then I I say um I'm gonna put Jay Z. Put Jay Z in. Jay Z. I sure. forgot. I'm dealing with Detroit right here, man. No, nah, but I'm saying Detroit. I mean, like I I just feel like Jay Z for sure. He been ahead of his time. If you really listen to Reasonable Doubt, I'm not just saying the politically correct answer. You know what I'm saying? You know how some people be saying Biggie Pockin. Yeah. Just to be saying it now. If you really listen to Reasonable Doubt right now today, you would be like, damn, that man was really speaking on stuff that's going on today. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. His foresight was real. Real deep Man I value that man How can people get a hold of you If they trying to link with you Miyaki 5 on Instagram That's really it You know what I mean I really don't even like Meeting people Like through Instagram no more But yeah. that's the, the first step Right there You know what I'm saying If you okay. go to my Instagram It got a link to my email Or whatever like that I like a lot of my business To be just organic Through word of mouth You know what I'm man. saying At this point Dope man I hope we did you justice On Boss Talk 101 Whenever you in Dallas You know to pull up on me yeah. I'm coming to Houston Actually I'll be in Houston mm -hmm. in a, When I get back You got some stuff lined, Business lined up out there Yeah Interviews Yeah Okay okay, uh, okay I've been out there About three times Man my boy right here Be putting me down too Oh Al D 300 Gonna throw something My way every time Yeah Got man. to his fam Yeah this it's dude got here got to his fam He always rocking out With us man He gonna yeah. give me hell Every time But he gonna rock with me now <laughs> Check it man Hey man 
You got anything else for this guy? I just want to let him know that it's a unique hustle, you know. Hey, that's my boy right there, man. <laughs> Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Hey. Yeah, man.